Europe's aviation safety watchdog will not accept a U.S. verdict on whether Boeing's troubled 737 MAX is safe. Instead, the European Aviation Safety Agency ASA, will run its own tests on the plane before approving a return to commercial flights. Here's a summary of the article. Europe's aviation safety watchdog will not accept a U.S. verdict on whether Boeing's troubled 737 MAX is safe. The 737 MAX has been grounded since March after two fatal crashes. ASA told the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration there would be no delegation on safety approval in a letter sent on 1 April. The 737 MAX plane has not flown commercially since an Ethiopian Airlines aircraft crashed shortly after takeoff on 10 March, killing 157. Mr. Kai's presentation showed a refusal to accept delegation was the first of the four conditions that had to be met before flights in Europe could resume. ASA's work on the 737 MAX had entailed an unprecedented level of effort, with 20 aviation experts and two to three online meetings a week with Boeing engineers. Reports in the U.S. have suggested that Boeing had hoped for FAA safety clearance next month, with airlines free to fly the aircraft later in the year. This post received a score of 43,440, with an upvote ratio of 94%. Here are the top comments in response to this article. I'm not terribly surprised. I work in avionics hardware design. EASA used to accept the FAA's requirements RTCA, do XXX docs, as acceptable, but over the past few years they have begun adding their own requirements on top of what the FAA has put in place. They seem to add just a few small details to a lot of requirements. Are they worthwhile or busy work? Have you had any feeling as to why they're doing it, not trusting them for example? Usually are just slight differences in stringency. Like a dB or two more sensitivity or a change in the amount of leniency you get under certain environmental conditions. We typically just test to the harder of the two requirements and then trace our requirement to that test. Just requires extra requirement tracing. I haven't felt like it has changed our designs much anyways. I do find it slightly funny when the pro-Brexit crowd in the UK, go on about not having to follow EU regulations when most of their exports go to the rest of the EU. Literally this is why leaving the EU is going to cause economic havoc. Estimates at the moment put the UK set to lose up to 7% GDP for a no deal. 2017 GDP estimates showed the UK at £2.227 trillion approximately, 7% doesn't sound a lot until it looks like you're set to lose nearly £200 billion, luckily no deal should be completely shelved now. Not necessarily. The ball is likely in the EU's court. If the Gov keeps refusing to come up with an acceptable deal, and the EU doesn't grant another extension, then it's hard ejection. The EU would rather grant another extension than have no deal, hence why Parliament is forcing the PM to seek one. That also has to go through the European Parliament, right? Unless I'm mistaken that means one dissenting nation deep sixes the extension. Not through the Parliament, just leaders of the 27 IIRC. It's highly unlikely, and hence why Parliament is trying to act in good faith. Indeed, the leaders have to approve, unanimously. Including the UK leader. So theoretically, Boris Johnson could ask for an extension, thereby respecting the law the UK Parliament adopted, then vote against granting an extension. And given his track record, I don't put it past him that this is a real possibility if he doesn't get his pre-Brexit election. It's a stupid situation, especially since they could fix them. Would it cost money? Yes. Is putting the proper safety systems in in the first place the right thing to do? Absolutely. Have I lost confidence in Boeing? Definitely. They have to redesign and replace the core CPU architecture of the plane as well as a bunch of other stuff, e.g. The proposed solution to the maneuvering characteristics augmentation system problem was to have the flight computers poll and vote to disable one when it's malfunctioning. However the FCCs are 80,286 cores and they're already topped out running the real-time code so adding MCAS polling to the FCCs kills real-time processing. It's like the entire system was built from the ground up to cut corners and fixing one problem just shows you how everything else underneath it is fucked too. This video was automatically created by Reddit to speech. The article and comments in this video were selected from Reddit according to their upvotes, and any paraphrasing was performed by smmry.com, without any human intervention.